want to look at demand, define demand, look at the law of demand, the determinant of demand, and the demand curve. So when we talk about demand, we are talking about the amount of good or service that a consumer is willing and able to purchase at various prices. So when I want a good, um, demand for that particular good goes beyond just the wish to have the product. So if I want a spray, for instance, um, the fact that I want this, the spray doesn't mean that uh, it becomes demand, but it should be backed by my ability to purchase the spray. So the moment I have the ability to purchase the spray, um, then we can call that demand for that particular commodity. So let's look at the law of demand. So all other things being equal, we we are expecting that when the price of a good goes up, the quantity demanded of that particular good falls. And when the price falls, the quantity demanded rises. So we are this one we wanted to know the relationship between price of the commodity and um its quantity. So that's why we are holding other things equal. In the next slide, we'll be looking at the determinant of demand. So we are holding all other determinants equal and we are only looking at the own price of the commodity. So what accounts for the uh, law of demand? We can talk about two effects that account for the law of demand. The first one is the income effect. With regards to the income effect, let's say that the price of a commodity like the spray that i use in the in the previous slides falls for instance we are expecting that um the consumer will buy more quantities of the spray giving the same level of income so if i used to buy um two sprays for 10 cities and um it means that one cost one cost um, five cities. So if I, if the spray is now reduced to two cities, I can buy five of them, giving the same ten cities. And the vice versa also holds. Or if I'm buying the same amount of the commodity, I'm going to buy it with less income because I will now have six cities left when I buy two of the sprays. So this shows an increase in my purchasing power. So the increase in the purchasing power or the decrease in purchasing power in terms of um, when the price increases, that is what we call the income effect. Now the substitution effect talks about the fact that we are moving our demand from a certain commodity to another one. So for instance, if I have Milo and Bon Vita, they can be used uh, interchangeably. You can use Milo instead of Bon Vita. So what happens is that if the price of Milo falls, people are going to get attracted to Milo rather than Bon Vita. So we see that the quantity demanded of Milo will actually increase. People are going to substitute the, the, the bon vita for milo so instead of consuming bon vita they will now move to the consumption of milo so when the price increases when the price of milo increases for instance people are going to shift to the consumption of what bon vita so um that is the substitution effect and in essence we depend more on the substitution effect rather than the income effect in considering the law of demand so let's look at the determinants of demand. So we talk about the price of the commodity. So when I'm going to buy the spray, I must consider the price of the spray. That's one of the important things I must consider. And we talk about price of a related good. So I should ask myself whether the good has a substitute or it has a complement. So substitutes are two goods that can replace each other as i use milo and bon vita i can use milo instead of bon vita and i can use bon vita instead of milo so what happens is that um this milo and bon vita becomes substitutes and complements are goods that can be used together you can talk about battery and phone you can talk about the left shoe and the right shoe and all the things that you want to talk about 
So I must consider these things before going in for um, the commodity. Then we talk about the income of the consumer. So because we said we are constrained and our resources are scarce, we are expecting that we consider what we have in our pocket before we go for any commodity. Our tastes and preferences can also be a determinant of what um, demand for a particular commodity. And we all also look at seasons. So which season are we in? So if we are in Hamatan, for instance, the 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 quantity demanded for sweaters and all those ones increases. So that is it. advertisement. When advertisement goes high, we are expecting that the demand for a particular commodity should increase. And we are expecting that expectations, for instance, expectation with regards to prices. Um, when people are expecting that prices will increase, they will consume more today. And when people are expecting that prices will fall, they will consume less today so that when the prices fall, they can consume more. Now let's look at the demand curve. So when we talk about the demand curve, we are talking about a locus of points that show the relationship between price of a commodity and the quantity demanded of that particular commodity. So um, we know that um, the um, demand curve is um, negatively sloped and it's as a result of the law of demand which says that when prices go up, uh, quantity demanded falls and when quantity uh, when prices for quantity demanded goes up right so this is the demand curve so as you can see here this is one point which is a relationship between p2 and q2 and this is another point which shows a relationship between p1 and q1 so joining these two points gives us the demand curve so as you can see here when the when we, we had price P1 corresponding with quantity Q1, but when the price increased from P1 to P2, we can see that the quantity demanded reduced from Q1 to Q2, confirming the negative relationship between price and quantity demanded.